Yeah. This is what I love about this time is we are rewriting the story of what it means to be human, of the history of the planet, of all of that, because all of this stuff is coming to light now. And we can, we can see, it's, it's really, really obvious that the stories we've been told are not accurate. We've known that, there have been hints of that, like that hammer, you're, it, what's it called? There's this hammer that, was, that is so ancient that the handle of it is essentially turned to charcoal, right? Mm -hmm. It's buried in, in a strata of rock that was, I don't, can't remember, like millions of years old like 20 million, 200 million years old, like an insane amount of time, a hammer. Huh. How did that happen if humanity is only this long, right? right? Or how did they know before they even got out to some of the farther planets, how, like Neptune? How did they know what they were gonna find when they got to Neptune? We had no idea. We can barely see it even with the telescopes we had. You could barely see it. And yet it was described in the Sumerian texts what, sad, or what Neptune is like. And when they got there, it was indeed exactly as the Sumerians wrote at the very dawn of what we consider civilization. Mm -hmm. So the whole concept of what it means to be human is based on this very, very limited viewpoint of time where we are, um, considered to be a very young civilization that we only have written history going back like a handful of thousands of, of thousands of years really right before Sumeria they think there's nothing except there's all these artifacts and there's all this knowledge that came from somewhere and now you look at also the the DNA um, studies that they're doing the genes that if you've read um, or heard, Greg Braden, he talks about this. There are genes that are in the human genome that could not have happened naturally. They're like spliced genes and they are the ones that are in, responsible for our increased brain capacity, our, I, I think it was our ability to speak in the way that we do and, and various other things. It's like a key gene and it could not have happened naturally in any way that they can imagine. And there's more than one of those in the human genome. And the stories of all the indigenous people, they always tell that we came from the stars, that gods came from the stars, created us. You know, not one of them, I was listening to Greg Braden the other day, he says, not one of them says, we were a random accident of evolution. <laughs> so, the whole story of, of, of what it means to be human is evolving. Like, what does it mean to you, to who you are, to what humanity is capable of, to know that we have a history that goes back possibly hundreds of millions of years, or at least tens of millions of years. And that this is just the latest blip, the only mm -hmm. one that we remember, the only one that we have written records of. Oh, that's my cat. Oh. And then there's also all this stuff coming forward about spiritual power and the life force that we never knew before, that we were always told, oh, that's not real. Meridians, chi, prana, acupuncture, right. that's all just quackery, right? Except mm -hmm. now we know that it's real. We can trace the meridians scientifically with scientific instruments. We can read the energy field outside of the body for feet, in fact. Eight feet, I think they've measured the heart energy field so far. Um, and this whole thing about spontaneous generation. I remember learning about spontaneous generation in school and how way back in the old days, in the medieval times when people were ignorant and stupid, they thought that life emerged from nothing, that you could have like a banana in a jar, say, and fly, fruit flies would spontaneously come to life in there from nothing and that, that was so silly that was ridiculous of course we know better now except for the fact that there are studies that are so well designed and so flawless that everybody who's been invited to um disprove it or to point out a flaw in it 
has not been able to, no one has been able to point a flaw in it yet, where they take grass stems that are sterilized to the nth degree, like nothing could possibly live in them, uh, like straw, straw that's been sterilized, or charcoal that's been sterilized, or iron filings that have been sterilized, and they keep them in a sterile container and life emerges from them. Mm. Little blue dots, little blue dots of light, little blue dots of life that when you look at them under a microscope look astonishingly like what you would find in a pond under a microscope. Okay. There's been a fellow in, uh, in the States, I believe, uh, just in this century who has been running these experiments and inviting lay people and scientists and everybody to come and see what he's doing and see if they can point out a flaw in this and nobody has been able to. Hmm. Life emerges in a way that we have been told is not possible or real. And when you consider that, how does it change what it means to be human? Right? 